Today we are going to see how an electric racing car works. A Formula E car. Electric cars are coming faster than we think and to enter this world. Today, we are going to make a different video and get to know the race of the future, the Formula 1 of electric cars, Formula E. And this is where we will find everything that is being developed to make these technologies more accessible as soon as possible. This is the first time that Formula E will take place in Brazil and here in Sao Paulo it will be at Anhembi, which is a street circuit, part taking place in the area where the carnival parades are and the rest in the surrounding streets about 3 kilometers of route. There are 11 teams, 22 drivers and 16 races in the season, almost always on street circuits. And today is the day to know the track, adjust the cars. There are people here passing by with several machines, taking some measurements, and one of them is to see how much the ground is taking, what is the friction that the car will have with the ground. You can tell that there is something here, because the floor is too hard on our shoes. This year, Formula E is debuting the third generation of cars, which reach up to 322 km per hour. According to the International Automobile Federation, the FIA, this one is the fastest, lightest, most powerful and most efficient electric racing cars ever built. The car has two engines, one front and one in the back, but the one at the front serves only as a generator to charge the battery when the driver brakes. And, yes, the battery is that huge thing that you see there and it's behind the driver. Regenerative brakes work so well that up to 40% of the energy spent in the race is generated by them. And, therefore, the car does not need to stop in the pits during the race to recharge. By the way, it also does not change tires. Here we have a demo car that is from Formula E, not from any specific team. The cool thing is that on the outside, the car is exactly the same. The same fairings, the same tires and the same batteries. They just change the engines and the configuration of the car, the way it recharges and everything. So, they said that I will be able to enter this one, we will be able to understand how this car works from the inside. If I can fit in it, right? I can't step on the car to go up, right? Let's go for the chair here. I thought the submarine was tight, but I think this car here won. My hips don't fit. was much easier. Let's go. Now I'm going to record an image of the inside, so you can have an idea of how tight it is here. This is the vision that the pilot has here inside the car. And now I'm fitting here because I took the seat off. I don't know if you can record in there, my feet, but look. It's very tight. It only has two pedals, the accelerator and the brake, because this car doesn't have gears, electric cars don't have gears. I don't know what all the controls are here on the steering wheel, but there are two paddles on each side and a series of buttons here in the middle. It's crazy that I'm in a super tight place, very low, but the visibility is really cool. It's like a convertible car. In the rearview mirrors, you can see everything that's happening behind you, and in front too. This protection here doesn't get in the way of practically anything. Just look. I think that thumbs up down there is worth it, huh? The fairing is all carbon fiber, and it was made by recycling the cars of the previous generation. And they don't have a spare car, so you have to have a lot of parts here if something break, you have to replace it during the race. One really cool thing about Formula E is that it works as a laboratory for the technologies that will make their way onto the road later in electric cars. And the coolest thing is that Brazilians are doing really well in Formula E. The first champion of a season was Nelsinho Piquet and the biggest name in Formula E is Lucas Di Grassi, who was twice third place, twice runner-up and once world champion, in addition to being a podium record holder. Let's talk to him. Electrification is nothing more than a better way for us to use energy to move things and people from point A to B. We are reaching a moment of technology that is much more efficient, cheaper, and this is the laboratory. The electric car has much more torque than a combustion car, we don't have gear. So, there is no such thing as that curve in third, that curve in fourth. All the corners are in first gear and the big difference is that the car is all software controlled, 
So, for example, here in the team 80 to 90% of the engineers are software engineers, which is optimization, and the rest are mechanics, suspension, the height of the car. One sensational thing about Formula E, which only an intelligent car allows, is that when the car passes over this range, it gains extra power, it's like a video game. This power can be used later by the pilot, at the strategic moment he wants. Could you give some examples of how this car is smarter than a normal car? What kind of intelligence does it use? There are several examples, but I think the coolest thing is to say that this car does not use mechanical brakes, right? The engine brakes the car and uses that energy to charge the battery back, so it's super efficient. If this were available in street cars, it would practically double the range of cars. And that's why the electric car has greater autonomy in the city than on the road, because when there's a red light, you brake, it recovers that energy. Besides, there is no brake wear, you never need to change a brake pad on an electric car, there is no pollution, the pad generates a lot of particle pollution. The safety car is also electric. It's a Porsche Taycan that almost reaches the speed of racing cars. Here in the safety car engine, we have several systems already installed. They will therefore help us to carry out the initial tests during the race weekend. We pick it up, we have a location transponder signal, the telemetry systems and also communication systems with the control tower. So this car not only does the safety car, not only does it intervene, but we also do a lot of initial testing and checking that the whole track system is working before the race cars come out on track. It's cool. There are 761 horses, 100% electric. The advantage of the electric car is that you don't have to wait, the power is always there. They sometimes complain that I go too fast. What is your expectation? Obviously, try to win the race. But the grid here is very competitive, our car is not performing at its best. Porsche has dominated, it has won 4 out of 5, so I will try to win, but it will be a challenge. Saturday morning, there are a few hours left before the start of the race and in Formula E qualifying takes place on the same day. So, the cars are passing by behind me to decide who will be in pole position. People is already arriving. We're going for a ride in a Porsche Taycan, which is the same car as the safety car. Man, what a feeling. My heart is 150 beats a minute. Very good, very good. Let's get on the grid. The Formula E car has 350 kilowatts of power. It is the equivalent of 475 horsepower. It can go from 0 to 100 per hour in less than 3 seconds. I swear I thought the noise would be nothing special, a low noise, but no. The main noise is the wind, it's really cool. It looks like there's a plane landing here. Look, we were rooting for Lucas, but it won't be today. He had a problem in qualifying, started in last place and ended up in 13th. Sergio Set Camara, who is another Brazilian pilot, came in 17th. And who ended up taking the first place on the podium was New Zealander Mitch Evans. Formula E is not even 10 years old. 
the coolest thing will be to go back to this video in, I don't know, 2033 and not only see how much the cars here have changed, but the amount of technologies that came out of here and that we, you and I, will be using on the streets. Guys, this one was a different video that we showed not only the car, but the whole event. And I thought it turned out pretty cool. If you have suggestions for other cool events that you want to see here at Manuel do Mundo, let us know in the comments. Want to see more speed with electric cars? We drove a Tesla Model S in California. And it was almost as fast as the one you just saw.